join kids hat family look that's a wolf out there he looks so big and cunning ya yeah, tofu wolves are known to be clever and cunning My childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats the wolf and the seven little goats wow i haven't heard that one tell me the story tia the wolf and the seven little goats once upon a time There lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. This was a happy little home. All the seven little kids used to play in the meadows, into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along. Their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss. Until one day A big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha! Such an easy treat they are for me. I haven't eaten since ages. I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone. patiently hiding in the bushes children i'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you i'll be back by evening just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf but mommy how would we know if it's not you the wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger don't worry mummy we would take care of ourselves the mother goat went off to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door after making sure that they are safe in their little home off they went to play When suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello my children. Open the door. Your mother is back. Hearing the voice, the youngest one scampered to the door. Mommy, mommy, she's back. In no time, the eldest one ran to catch his little sibling. No, it's not our mommy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. And then, looking at the door, the eldest kid shouted back saying, "Go away, you big bad wolf! A mother doesn't have such a hoarse voice." Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk, as he had heard that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids You shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and gulped off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, "Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads, and ginger ale." "Oh, that sounds like a mother." Should we open the door now? But look down there. A mother has not got black feet. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white. from head to toe running back to the house he knocked again and said kids 
Your mother is back. Open the door. That sounds like a mother and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see who was standing there. The big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken. And the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh mother, the bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry. Let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors, thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window and shouted happily Mommy, Mommy, the wolf has died Now we can play freely outside without any fear And they lived happily ever after Now that was one cunning wolf But Tofu, if you be bad to others Bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Ya tia.
What happened, Tofu? Why are you so sad? Tia, I am sad because I lost my bicycle last week. My friends enjoy the ride on their bicycles, but I can't. I wish they lose their bicycles too. Tofu, I never knew you will be so mean. You sound very selfish. You should stop this right away. Uh, Tia, Tia, sorry Tia, but I was really sad. I don't have one, but my friends do. I just feel left out. It's okay Tofu, I can understand that you are sad. But wishing bad for others is not good. We should always think good for others. Come, I'll tell you a story about a fox who became a laughing stock amongst his friends just because he was very selfish. The Fox Without a Tail One day, a fox was walking in a forest. Suddenly, he heard a huge snap and in an immediate reaction, he jumped. But something awful happened to the poor little thing. He found his tail stuck in a trap and this gave a sharp pain in his rear. Oh! Ah! That hurts so much! Oh! My tail is stuck in a trap! What would I do now? After battling for long with his tail and the trap, he gave a final try to it and with that came another snapping voice. Tears coming out of his eyes, the fox moaned. Oh! My tail! My tail! I lost my furry beautiful tail! What would I do now? I'll become laughing stock of my skulk now. This is so embarrassing. And he walked deeper into the forest with his head bowed down in sorrow. When suddenly an idea struck his mind. He decided to call a meeting of all his friends. you for a reason today. While walking through the forest, I kept wondering. We have eyes, nose, ears, teeth, legs, all for some reason. But why, why do we need a tail? It's a useless thing and keeps bothering us for some reason or the other. It either gets in way of our sitting or when kept outside is left for someone to trip over. So after a deep thought, I cut off my tail and want you to do the same. It feels great without that useless thing. The skulk of fox kept looking at the fox in amazement as to what he was saying. It's true. But nobody has really thought about them without the tail. It surely would be painful to do that. Meanwhile, a young agile fox jumped onto the higher place and addressed the skulk. Are you saying this because you no longer have a beautiful furry tail? Here you are just talking about your self-interest so that you don't get embarrassed and feel left out of the skulk. And the rest of the skulk went off laughing away and discussing as to how selfish and mean the fox is. In order to not feel embarrassed, he wants everyone to chop off their tail. Tia, now I understood. I shouldn't be selfish and not think.
think bad for others. <laughs> Come, I'll buy you an ice cream, Tofu. Dia, how important is it to be clever? It is important to be clever, but one should use it only for good reason, not to hurt someone. Come, I'll tell you a story of a clever monkey and a crocodile who thought he was clever but was actually a big fool. The Clever Monkey Once upon a time, on a riverside, lived a monkey on a tree. The place was a paradise for him because just hopping on a stone, he used to reach a small island in the middle of the river, which was adorned by choicest and juiciest of fruits. In the vicinity of the island, there lived a crocodile couple. And every day they used to drool at the monkey, hopping in and out of the island. But the monkey was so clever that the crocodile couple never managed to lay their hands on the monkey. One day, the female crocodile said, Dear husband, I have a plan to nab this monkey. Ah, none of our tricks have worked with this clever monkey. What brilliant idea do you have now? The female crocodile whispered in his ears and all he could do was laugh sheepishly. The next day, when the monkey was busy feasting on fruits on the island, the crocodile very silently went and sat on the stone. When the monkey was done with eating, he was about to hop onto the stone, when suddenly he realized that the stone is looking bigger than usual. He understood that it was a crocodile waiting for him. He called out to the crocodile. Is that you, Mr. Crocodile? No, no, it's not me. And the monkey thought, how dumb could the crocodile get? So he thought for a second and called out to the crocodile. Oh, you surely caught me this time. I'll make your job easier now. Just open your mouth and I'll jump into it on my own. The foolish crocodile opened his wide mouth with his eyes shut and waited for the monkey to jump. The clever monkey, who was watching the closed eye crocodile, hopped on the head of the crocodile and crossed the river. <laughs> you couldn't fool me this time either. By clear and clever thinking, the monkey managed to trick the foolish crocodile. Ha 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 ha! The crocodile was indeed a fool who got tricked by the clever monkey. Ya yeah, Tofu! And the moral is that we must think before we do anything. Like that clever monkey and not like that foolish crocodile. What are you doing, Tofu? I'm trying to water the plants, but this hose is broken. Come, let me tell you a short story. The Clever Crow The Clever Crow
One hot day, a thirsty crow flew all over the fields looking for water. For a long time, he could not find any water. Suddenly, he saw a water jug below the tree. He flew straight down to see if there was any water inside. Yes, he could see some water inside the jug. The crow tried to push his head into the jug. Sadly, he found that the neck of the jug was too narrow. What should I do? I am really thirsty. How do I drink water? Then he tried to push the jug to tilt for the water to flow out, but the jug was too heavy. He looked around and saw some pebbles. He suddenly had a good idea. He started picking up the pebbles one by one, dropping each into the jug. As more and more pebbles filled the jug, the water level kept rising. Soon, it was high enough for the crow to drink. His plan had worked. So, like the clever crow, was able to find a solution to the problem by thinking and working hard, would you be able to find one to this too? Good night, Tia. Good night, Tofu. Once upon a time, there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. At the back of the house, there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch named Dame Gothel. One day, the woman saw a plant called Rampion, which is used to make salads. Dear husband, I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant. Oh, but that belongs to the wicked witch. Oh, please do something. I really want to eat those rampions. Okay, dear. I will try to get it for you. At midnight, the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch. And started taking some rampions. The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it. But the very same night, there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong. Ha! 
How dare you, human, come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief. You will suffer for it. Oh, please forgive me. My wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her. Oh, if that's the truth, then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants but only on one condition. What is that condition? You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world. The man in his terror consented to everything. As time passed by, the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. But that very same night, the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl, leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow. You are such a beautiful looking girl. I will name you Rapunzel and take care of you. Ha 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 The witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs, but just a small little window. As the time passed by, Rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks. But her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere. Sad Rapunzel just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs. When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day, when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs, la, la, la. a very handsome prince was passing by. He stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. La, la, la. Oh! What a beautiful song! Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door, but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's song. One day, he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. And he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh, who are 
are you? Oh Lord, you are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh prince, I am ready to go away with you. But I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes. Don't worry, Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh, so he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this! The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. <laughs> the witch cast a spell on the prince. And he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you, Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it and when he approached, Rapunzel said, Oh Prince, you finally found me. I missed you so much. I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying. Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again and he could see with them as before. I can see again. Oh my sweet Rapunzel, what have they done to us? Let's go back to my kingdom. He took her to his kingdom. After a year, Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her and they lived happily ever after. Get up, Tofu! Or you'll get late for school. Get up, Tofu! Tia, you? <laughs> what happened? That... That was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That was me in your dream. Now get up and get ready. Tia, today I'm very happy. I met 
one of my friends who was acting all greedy and selfish in class. So I told him the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and he soon understood the lesson. Really Tofu? I haven't heard this one. I would love to hear it from you. The Pied Piper of Hamelin Once upon a time, there was a town named Hamelin. The town was beautiful, bustling with energy and wealth. But no sooner the happiness of the town was ruined by a plague. Plague of Rats There were rats everywhere. So much so that the people of the town didn't even have a place to keep a step without tripping over the rats. There were rats of every size, shape, every age and color. Nothing worked as a remedy. Not even the cats were able to control the plague of rats. Giving up, the authorities decided to announce a reward of 10 bags of gold to anyone who could help to get rid of the rats. One day, a strange-looking man came to the town. He was dressed in their traditional dress, but all red in color, with a long peculiar nose and big wide eyes. He adorned his head with a feather in his hat. He went to the authorities and said, Ah, uh, I have a solution for your problem. I assure you that not a single rat would live in this beautiful town. But I want... 10 gold bags that you have promised as prize. The authorities were not very sure of his commitment but still allowed him to give it a try as they had no other option. Soon the strange looking man took out a Pied Piper from his pocket and started playing a very strange tune. Within no time, all the rats started coming out and following him. From every nook and corner of the town, so many rats came out that the whole street was filled with them. Very strangely, the rats started following the Pied Piper, who was playing the strangest tune ever heard. The Pied Piper took them to the town's river and entered into it. In no time, all the rats, mesmerized by his tune, fell into the river and drowned. There were rejoices in the town, celebrations all over. Soon, the Pied Piper went to the authorities to claim his prize money. 
But since their work was done and they thought that this plague would never return, they shunned him off and asked him to leave without giving him a single penny. What selfish people are these? I did them a favor, freed them from such a bad epidemic and all they could care was to be greedy and ungrateful? Now look how I will teach these selfish people a lesson. The Pied Piper took out his pipe once again and started playing another strange tune. A tune that no one had ever heard before. In no time, all the children of the town, mesmerized by the music, started following the Pied Piper. The children were so lost in his tune that they didn't realize that they have come out to the outskirts of the town. The Pied Piper took them to a cave and let them in. He kept playing the tune till all the children were inside the cave. He then closed the cave with a huge stone. Only two kids were left in the entire town. A boy who was hard of hearing and a girl who had hurt her legs so badly that she couldn't keep up the pace with the rest of the kids. These two kids went back and told their parents about the Pied Piper and how he lured all the children into the cave. Soon the authorities went begging to the Pied Piper and requested him to let their children out. This time they promised to reward him with 20 gold bags. I don't trust you any longer. I want my prize money beforehand. Soon he was handed over his prize money and he left never to be seen again. The children were freed from the cave and the parents hugged them and cried. Watching this, the authorities said, We surely have learned a lesson. This man came out of nowhere and saved us from an epidemic. All that we did in return was to be selfish and ungrateful. He surely taught us a lesson of not to be greedy and selfish. That night, the town rejoiced and celebrated like a festival. It still said that in the town of Hamelin, if you ever go and listen carefully, you might hear the beautiful sound of the Pied Piper. Tofu, I'm so proud of you. You must be a little naughty, but you surely are a good boy. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Tofu? I think you should help the poor dog. Why, Tia? Wait, I'll explain this to you through a story. 
The Lion and the Mouse. One day, a lion was sleeping in his den. A mouse was also playing nearby. Little mouse began running up and down upon him. This soon wakened the lion. Angry at the little mouse, the lion caught the mouse and said, You little mouse, how dare you wake me? I will kill you. The mouse was frightened and prayed to the lion. Pardon, O oh king, please do not kill me. I am a little creature. Please let me go and I will do you a good return one day for sparing my life. The lion was rather amused to hear this, thinking, What good can he do to me? But let him go. A few days after, the lion was walking in a jungle. He found himself caught in a hunter's net. He roared and rolled to get out of the net, but he failed. The lion was pleading for help. Help me, help me. The mouse, whose life was saved by the lion, heard the roar and ran to the lion and said, Don't worry, my friend. I will save you. The mouse gathered all his friends and told them, We all have to help my friend and set him free. The mouse and his friends cut through the net and set the lion free. The lion escaped and thanked the mouse. And from that day, they became the best of friends. Like the little mouse and lion had become friends and in the end helped each other, you should help this dog too. Because a friend in need is a friend indeed. you trying to do tofu? I am trying to pluck mangoes from this tree but the effort is going useless. That's because the mangoes are too far away and the stones are too heavy. Then what should I do dear? I really want those mangoes. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time there was a mama pig and three little pigs. One day, mama pig said to them, You are old enough to build your own houses. The first pig built a house of straw. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The second pig built his house with sticks, stronger than the first pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The third pig built his house with bricks, stronger than the second pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of straw. 
the wolf knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed. The house of straw fell down. And the wolf ate up the first little pig. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of sticks. He knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed and blew the house away. The house of sticks fell down and the wolf ate up the second little pig. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of bricks. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. The big bad wolf tried to huff and puff and blow the house down. But he couldn't. He kept trying for hours, but the house was very strong. He tried to enter through the chimney, but the clever third little pig boiled a big pot of water and kept it below the chimney. The wolf fell into it and died. <laughs> so, the way the third wise pig managed to escape from the wolf without using weapons, but through his wisdom, would you be able to do the same? <laughs> to do my homework, Tia? Tofu, it's dinner time and you haven't completed your homework yet? I hope you know that your teacher will be really angry. I will do it after this cartoon, Tia. But please help me so that I can finish it fast. You have been watching TV all day. You should get up and do your homework first. My hand has been hurting since morning. I'm giving it some rest. Also, dear sister, will you please get my bag and pencil box from the room? Excuses and more excuses. He should know his priorities right. Hmm. Did I forget it in school? What will I tell my teacher in school? You should be more responsible, Tofu. You are a big boy now. 
Anyway, complete the rest of your homework at least now and be more careful next time onwards. So Tofu, let me tell you a story. In a land far away lived a hard working and kind trader. Mostly he traded in salt. He also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work. The trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other. Here, let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt. I am so tired today. Why do I have to work every day? I wish I could sleep throughout the day. But no, I have to carry these loads of salt and move. Come on horse! Start walking, cross that bridge, until then I'll pack some food for myself. The horse was crossing the river. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the water. As he was carrying sacks of salt on his back, the salt got wet and dissolved in the water. So when the horse got up, the sacks on his back were lighter. The horse thought to himself, Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope Master is not watching. When the master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning, he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here.
the trader got really confused. As the sacks started weighing lesser every time. The horse purposely started slipping into the water every day so that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes. To his surprise, he noticed the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge. He sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really, really heavy. The trader laughed at him and said, Horse, I am your master. This is your work. I work very hard and worship my work. I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work. I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work. The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again. What a wise trader! Right Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I am really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here, take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes, 
I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you, Tia. Please, let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. I promise you that. John stays with his cousins. Yesterday, he came late to the class and the teacher scolded him a lot. John said his cousin brothers made him finish their course before they let him leave for school. He said they always trouble him and make him do a lot of housework. Oh no! He must feel really bad. John is a very nice boy. He doesn't disobey anyone. He is very nice to his cousin brothers despite the way they treat him. That is very nice of him. We should always forgive people for their mistakes. Have you heard the story of Cinderella? Once upon a time, there lived a young girl called Cinderella. Cinderella's mother had died and so her father had married another woman who had two daughters. One day, Cinderella's father went to work and never returned. Cinderella was left at the mercy of her stepmother and two stepsisters who made her do all the work of the house. Cinderella, it's morning already. Where is our breakfast? Just a moment, stepmother. I am just bringing it out. As soon as Cinderella had laid the breakfast, the stepmother and stepsister started eating it. Cinderella served her own plate too and was about to eat when her stepsister pushed her own plate away. Yuck! I hate it! Yes, now that you mention it, it really is horrible. Mother, do something! Cinderella, are you trying to kill us? What kind of food is this? But, but stepmother, I have made it the way I always make it. How dare you argue with me? Go and make new breakfast for us. Don't you dare do anything else till we have had our breakfast. And this is what went on in their house every day. The stepmother and stepsisters troubled Cinderella without any reason. But Cinderella loved them still and never ever complained. One day an announcement was made in the village. Let everybody know. There will be a royal ball at the palace tomorrow night and the king's son, Prince Charming, will marry a maiden from amongst the guests. Everybody from the village is invited. The whole village was excited. Even Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters couldn't stop talking about it in the house. And that is how Cinderella found out about the ball. The royal ball! Prince Charming! The whole village is invited! I will finish my work quickly so we can all go together. Won't it be just wonderful? You! Who said anything about you going? 
you will stay here and polish our shoes till you can see your face in them and so with a heavy heart cinderella saw her stepmother and stepsisters dress up and leave for the royal ball the next day once they had left she cried bitterly suddenly her room lit up and cinderella saw the most beautiful fairy she could imagine she held in her hand a delicate wand who are you get up child i am your fairy godmother i am here to get you to the royal ball really i never knew i had a fairy godmother but how will i get to the ball i don't have anything to wear you don't worry about that my child And so in just a few minutes Cinderella was ready for the royal ball As she thanked her fairy godmother and got aboard the chariot she received a word of caution from the fairy godmother Remember to be back home at 12 otherwise the spell will wear off Soon Cinderella arrived at the palace As she entered the great ballroom everyone turned to look Who this beautiful maiden was Nobody could recognize her Not even her own stepmother and stepsisters Prince charming walked to her May I have this dance with you? Yes, your highness. And so Cinderella and Prince Charming danced together throughout the evening. Till Cinderella heard the clock strike. Fairy godmother's words came back to her. She needed to get out of there before the clock struck 12. Without saying a word, she tore away from the princess's grasp and ran out of the palace. The prince ran after her. "Wait, wait. What is wrong? Why are you running?" I don't even know your name. But Cinderella dared not wait or even look back. Her beautiful gown was already turning into rags again. Her hair was coming loose from the perfect bun that the fairy godmother had made for her. She didn't even stop when one of the glass slippers came off her foot and fell in the palace driveway. She ran out of the palace gates and vanished into the darkness on a path that led to her home. Once home, she went back to polishing the shoes that had been given to her and decided never to speak to anyone about the ball. A few days later, 
two men from the palace showed up at their door. The lady that Prince Charming fell in love with left behind her glass slipper at the royal ball. The prince believes that such a beautiful slipper could fit only his beloved. And so we're asking all the girls in the village to try the slipper. The one whom it fits would be the one the prince will marry. If you have any girls in the house, please ask them to try the slipper. Oh, yes, yes. I am sure it was one of my daughters. The slipper would fit one of them. And so both the stepsisters tried to fit their foot into the slipper one by one. They pushed and pushed but couldn't get their foot in. Looks like it wasn't your daughter's after all. Is there any other young lady in the house? No, there isn't. You can leave. As the king's men made ready to leave, Suddenly, the door of the house was thrown open and Prince Charming himself stood there. Who is this beautiful girl in the upstairs window? Madam, you have lied to us. I demand that the girl be called forth and try the slipper. Y yes, yes, but she is only a servant girl. Nevertheless, Cinderella! Cinderella! Come down here at once! Yes, stepmother. The moment Prince Charming saw Cinderella, he knew he had found his beloved. He took the slipper from the king's man and slipped it on to her foot himself. The slipper fit perfectly in a moment. Cinderella was once again transformed into the beautiful maiden from the night of the ball. Prince Charming took her to the palace with him. He ordered that the stepmother and stepsisters be punished for lying to the king's men and treating Cinderella so badly and rudely. But being the kind-hearted person that she was, Cinderella asked for them to be forgiven. The prince fell in love with her even more for her generosity and they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! How wonderful is it to forgive people! Thank you for telling me this story. I will tell it to John too. I am sure he will like it. Okay. Shall we go home now? I think it's getting late. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.